So, what we're going to do is to discuss solutions to the gaps that we have identified earlier. So remember, game listed six gaps, right? So if we flip those gaps around, they can also be the domains of solutions, right? So now we're going to have a, a discussion, a World Cafe discussions on each of the solutions that we're going to bring forward. And if you actually notice, those solutions also are the topics for the flagship programs that's being launched. Now, on your name tags, there's a color, right? If you can go towards the flip chart where your color is, right? So please all stand and look for your color for the flip charts. And within each of those tables, there will be a host and a scribe. The online participants, you can join and it will be facilitated by Dr. Pak D. Pak D will have instructions for you. The questions to discuss. If you look at the screen, how can we emphasize inclusion and equity as integral to the success of this particular solution for policymakers rather than treating them as mere add-ons? The second one is that what strategies are required to transform inclusion and equity from words on paper to genuine substantive aspects of the solution? Who holds the responsibility for implementing these changes? So those are the questions that you will need to discuss and you have 15 minutes for the first round. Uh, online participants, please join. Dr. Pak, they will facilitate the conversation with you. Um, I think maybe we just continue with our own discussion. Um, as you can see, um, they have seven groups that are divided here in person, but uh, for online participants, we are only having one group to have the discussion. So the way that we will be doing it is a little bit different than what the people that are here in person are doing with the with the cafe discussion. But I think just to get us started, um, as you can see from the screen that Agus is sharing, so these are the key questions, or two key questions that they would like us to discuss or think about, uh, basically. Um, so the first question would be, how can we emphasize inclusion and equity as integral to the success of this solution for policymakers rather than treating them as mere add-ons? And the second question that they would like us to consider would be, what strategies are required to transform inclusion and equity from words on paper to genuine substantive aspects of this solution? and who holds the responsibility for implementing these uh, changes. So these are the two key questions that the organizer would like us to reflect on. Uh, the way that we will be doing this is that because uh, everyone is coming from different background and uh, we are not dividing into group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, the way that they would like us to do is that think about these two questions and depending on what uh, of the seven questions that you would like, and you can uh, answer them. So what it means is that, okay, we have like two key questions for you to consider, and then you can reflect on these based on whatever topic that uh, you would like to, to reflect on based on the seven themes that they have or what Agus have uh, shown before this. Let me see if I can also share the screen so that you can see the, the group. So this is the seven tables that they have in person. Um, so what um, the organizer would like us to do would be that with the two questions that you have just seen, you can actually decide what uh, topic among the seven topics that you see here that you would like to reflect on uh, using the two questions that they have shown just now in the, in the slide. And the way that we will be doing this is that um, uh, we will be giving you about 15 minutes to decide what question that you want to answer. Um, sorry, uh, what, what table that you would like to pick in order to answer the two questions that you have just seen. Please click on the join the board uh, from Agus in the chat 
then you will see the solution cafe jam board so what you would like what we would like you to do is that uh, the two questions that you have seen um, you have about 15 minutes to put together the the notes on one of the tables or all the tables if you would like to I just I quick check in. Uh, should we come back together, or do you still need more time to to answer the questions? It looks like quite a few people have um, input their answers. Hopefully, someone can speak about them. I maybe I suggest that we now come back together because we have about 15 minutes left and then uh, we also have to report back to the to the plenary the outcome of our exercise um, so can I please ask that we come back together if it's okay I hope that the silence means that it's okay <laughs> But can 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 you actually hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I've okay, got some thank you. Yes, I also see that. Uh, I think yeah. Let let's come back together and thank you so much first of all for the inputs that you have provided on the different topics. Um, maybe as a suggestion from my side because the next activity in the next session when we come back together, uh, Isabel will be reporting back on the uh, input from our participants. So maybe I would ask uh, Isabel for each of the cafe tables that we have here. If you have any question with regards to the input that we have seen in the sticky notes or if anything that is unclear that you would like to clarify. So back to you, Isabel. Yes, one moment. Okay, so I think I understand most of them and they're really cool answers. Um, one question, I'm not sure who wrote it, um, on Cafe One, governing long-term long climate, long climate change adaptation measures. Um, someone's put uh, bridging capital could be a practical strategy for long-term. Um, would you be at someone, who, whoever wrote that, be able to just expand a little bit on that? That would be useful. I, I tried to find out who wrote that, but I don't think I could, but just uh, could uh, someone who wrote this note uh, elaborate a little bit on what you have written here? Uh, you put in the chat. Yeah, if you could just write a couple of sentences on what you mean, that would be great. Um, but what I've taken from most of um, all of these cafes, this, all of the um, comments that you've put, they are very similar and all relate to ensuring participation of all stakeholders, all members of the community, um, to ensure that these inclusion issues are addressed, not just in the policy design, but throughout the whole process to implementation and the practical level as well. Um, yes. And also people have put about um, like talking about who, who is actually being impacted by these. And that's the same for quite a lot of these cafes, um, these topics, who are we talking about and what are these, either the good in, positive impacts or these unintended negative impacts as well. So who is it sustainable for and who are we talking about? Um, We have much longer until we have to report back. Um, we have about 10 minutes, but uh, of course, like uh, if everything is clear on your side, Isabel, we can also have, uh, we can also end this uh, 
sessions and then we just wait to report back. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that um, because you will be reporting back that the notes are clear for you. Thank you. Yes, I think so. In the next five minutes, I'll just quickly review again, but they all seem um, very clear. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And also thank you to Isabel, who will be reporting the outcome of this exercise. Um, we can actually have a bit of an early break, but then we will come back together in the plenary. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please have a quick break and then we'll come back together. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can we start switching tables now? Yeah, this table, can you go to Andrew? Andrew's table, can you come down to Leonie? And then uh, this table, you go down to Karen, and then Karen's table come down here. And then those in the middle, the middle one goes to the end, the end one goes to the Front, and then the front one goes to the middle. Okay, apologies. We really need to wrap up now because otherwise we will be here forever discussing um, we need to report back, okay? Can you all please start bringing your flip charts and lining up, lining them up in front uh, according to the numbers that we have here? Okay. I'm sure everyone is excited to find out what were discussed in each of the group. So please come forward if you want to listen and look at all the different flip charts. Again, so let's be reminded ourselves why we're doing this. We're trying to look for those or develop those guiding principles that we have discussed earlier so that when we look at the solutions, we have very clear guidance on how to ensure that they are equitable and they are inclusive. Okay, now let's start with our online participants. Um, so my name's Isabel Mallon and I am a researcher at SEI. I'm in both the SummerNet project and a little bit on MTT as well. Um, so the virtual cafe, we looked at all um, six or seven of the topics um, that um, was proposed. And I guess one of the key takeaways for us was looking at co-production and participation of everyone involved. So from stakeholders, um, participation of everyone in the local communities, we've got the technical and social team as well. Um, so this includes um, ensuring that there's free prior and informed consent. And we also looked at the question of who, so who is the sustainable pathway actually sustainable for um, in, the, in Cafe 6, or who is this new technology actually benefiting? So ensuring that there's no unintended negative outcomes. Um, and we thought that this, is, this essentially comes from, um, comes down to communicating and ensuring that there's full participation to avoid silos particularly between technical and social teams um, that will, this will then ensure that there's inclusion um, in all of these topics. I hope you're able to hear me. Thank you very much, Isabel, and our online participants. A big round of applause. So let's move on to the next uh, group. So maybe let's start 
from this side. So who will report on other solutions? Who is the scribe for other solutions? Go ahead. Hi, everyone. So my name is Kain Su, and um, together with Dr. Ching Nerat, we facilitated um, other solutions that we haven't really discussed today. Um, so we've discussed a few things, but our highlights would be that um, all the solutions we discussed about, it's about people dimension is really important. Um, so, and we haven't heard enough about focusing on the behavior change of the people. And this is not an easy process, and uh, we discussed a little bit about how we can uh, really implement it. It's through a few um, approaches, like for example, incentive structures, where people are given social, economic, and political incentive structures, but this has to be well coordinated between ministries and related stakeholders. And also, we must be aware of unintended consequences from these kind of measures. And one more important thing is that through education, like for example, for WEC, water, climate, energy, um, we can also add it to curriculum since the very young age. Um, through this, we can uh, gradually um, encourage behavior change of generations, coming generations. And um, methodological approach, like, such as rights, right-based framework and gender transformative approaches. Um, and we have already maybe seen some of this in like coming up Asian environmental rights framework. And through uh, encouraging um, uh, these kind of approaches, we can uh, have uh, encourage behavior changes. And that's from highlights from our group. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kang Su. Table number six will be reporting. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Suwana Wong. I am the Mekong Think Tank Fellow on Jesse Component. And uh, my group is focused on achieving just um, renewable energy transition. And our discussion of focus on inclusion and equity, like what can we make the renewable energy transition more inclusion and equity way? So our approach is to, uh, I'm gonna like highlight this as to change the channel. I mean, to change the motivation channel, like to let people think about why do we need to use the um, renewable uh, um, energy and then, um, so that another, and then after we change the motivation channel, so and so another that uh, we also think about the multi-channel um, communication, which um, make sure that to inform all stakeholders about the decision making, about the um, motivation, about the information about the uh, renewable uh, uh, energy, and then. One last uh, one thing that to also keep in mind about the inclusion and equity renewable energy is to keep um, user in mind. Um, this is uh, one of the approach that uh, raised in our team, and this is also important to think about the uh, bottom up approach, uh, which simply meaning that uh, we, um, the public, or uh, we, the end user, want to. Uh, transition to the renewable energy, we advocate with the government counterpart, with the private sector, but it's also important to let um, the local community um, to own it, to, to be a part of the uh, renewable energy infrastructure. So I think this is all the highlight from our group discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Savannah Bong. Table five. everyone so our team is fine and the topic is uh, enhancing effectiveness and civil ops okay uh so the topic of uh, type of five is enhancing the effectiveness of civil society knowledge by policy influence organization in the short words just cbo or cso uh and uh my name is tang from Summonet uh, steering committee, young member, and 
together with my um, presentation. Sorry, Pat. Sorry, Pat. Yes, thank you. And uh, from the uh, table discussion, we learn a lot from the senior researcher and senior um, advisor. And uh, first, we want to know about effectiveness. What is need effectiveness? And how, secondly, how to do it? Microphone. Uh, how to make the organization at the local level, at the very grassroots level, be effective. So we come with first uh, idea is respect other people, opinion, and do no harm. Uh, this principle that to make sure that uh, even in the group of different opinion, we still respect the partner, we still respect the uh, local partner and um, the researcher especially do no harm and respect the local people opinion. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, and uh, the second one was to be inclusive and make good uh, good networks um, and to also recognize that there are both um, formal and informal connections that we can make long term that are that are useful and helpful towards um, achieving effectiveness. And uh, one of the things to be inclusive and make good connection is maybe we come with informal connection because uh, from the experience of many senior researcher uh, from our table they share that sometimes informal meeting informal connection is even more important than interestingly uh, have influence on the policy maker and the researcher or the mediator also need the to, to know, have the tactic to approach the right person in the right time for influence the policy. So it's important and um, need to be very strategic. And there's also a third point about meaningful engagement. Um, for this one, I think it's may, may, mainly being, I don't know, Tan, do you, do, you, do you have an idea about what they wrote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the funny story is I joined the group first and Poribat is the second person joins the meeting, but we still understand it. We have a mean we had a meaningful discussion. Yes. And engage. Okay, so meaningful engagement is the big uh, big keywords. So people on the table also discuss about how to engage people, how to really uh, make the local people can uh, let the the voice of the local people be heard. So it's it's very um important question, right? How to be how to engage them. Uh all, like the approach of the researcher, we approach them in the beginning of the process or in the middle of the process or just the result. We just need the result. We just come to the field just to collect the data and just have the result. It's not engagement. Engagement is more meaningful and need the process of build a trust building and uh, really have to listen to the local voice. What is the issues that they really want to uh, bring to the uh, bring to the policymaker and researchers need to understand that their need and that's the only way. That's the only way they engage with the researcher and policy maker, because if it's not come from the local needs, the policy don't work and the researcher result doesn't come to effect to the people. Yeah, thanks, Tan. And I also think the third point and links kind of links with the fourth point about open, open mindedness, which I think the, the, the linking of the two is like being respectful. So when we have meaningful engagement, we have to make sure that we respect other people's opinions. And similarly, when we are, when we are open minded, we also have to be respectful. I think um, a few panel uh, panelist members today also mentioned about that in terms of trust, uh, in terms of um, uh, making sure that we we don't always think that ourselves our own thinking is right but also that respecting other people's um converse opinions diverge opinions as well because that can be helpful for when we do our work as well is that would you say that is right tan okay maybe one more final point oh one final point um so uh, actually, we have many other points like be strategic in identifying issues. Uh, it's quite similar to engagement, how to make people engage. So we need to identify the issue that is really relevant and that the issues that uh, can, we, we need to be strategic that if the demand 
can risk at the local uh, at the policy level or not. We need to be um, realistic also about the demand and the okay sorry i have to cut you at this point because we have still have several groups to report and what we're looking for really is a key highlight so maybe oh. in one sentence what in is the sentence. key highlight okay yeah, yes in one sentence uh, i think uh, dr juan said it best um we have to uh to be effective we have to have money under the table <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> i hope dr juan is not serious about that <laughs> all right table number four Okay, so just the highlight, please. Okay. And tell us about yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Medina. I'm from Thailand. I'm a Jesse fellow under MTT program. Uh, we're in today's topic. We talked about the Jesse revolution and leaving no one behind as the cornerstone of the resilience and preparedness in the WVC. Um, so first thing, uh, current uh, start off with what is inclusion and um, yeah, inclusion. So uh, first uh, it was the, the, the first answer would be the awareness and engagement of all people affected by the decision uh, in the decision, which means that we have the meaningful particip participation and prepared. So we know terms and protocols and that sometimes they don't even know that what the what they need and what the um, what is it, what is inclusion and what is um, sorry. Yeah. So uh, the second issue is the addressing power imbalance. And the third one, I'll just go, go quickly. And third one would be the resilience and preparedness. And fourth one is the leaving no one behind. And this we focus not, not leaving no one behind, but more on the focus on the people who has been left behind already. And the fifth one is the cross-sectional coordination and balancing the trade-offs, which uh, one of the fellow as talking about that we have the um, uh, there are 13 ministries and thousands of regulation and conflict of interest and that is is already a, a, um, in the complex of, of everything inside already and then moving on to the next session we talked about the strategy or the solutions that we are trying to address the issues so first thing that uh, we talked about is helping people on the ground and then trying to help socially and economically development of the poor and also improve or implement nature-based solutions in the, into the policies and then organize the policy dialogue and multi, uh, with the multi-stakeholder. And the third one, not, not the third, the last one would be having a meaningful uh, communication-based research to collect data to set the strategies and priorities. Karen, if you want to, okay, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Medina. Can I ask uh, table number three? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, 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 I will present. The Can you tell us more? Yeah. of yourself first um uh, my name is Tan. Uh, i'm uh, from vietnam and uh, in uh, mtt program uh, i will present uh, the summary of the, the number uh, the group three about the roles of uh, water storage management options um uh, in uh, in my uh, the participant in my uh, group they discuss and uh, give some uh, solution here that you can see uh, but first one like uh, when you in the past the natural uh, basin uh, that they have there is own uh, solution and now they, we uh, like uh, so many people they come and they uh, do some human activity and then like uh, it's might be uh, destroyed the basin and then we can back to give or uh, find a solution for that and so the first one is uh, uh, in uh, uh, urban corn can if like correctly uh, they uh, the community they they use a uh, um, uh, a solution like uh, underground water bank that try to like uh, store the the rainwater for uh, use uh, for different purposes uh, rather than like uh, and um, to manage raw and other issues. 
Uh, and the second one is uh, the uh, monthly check. It's a natural uh, solution, uh, like uh, to regulate the water rhythm uh, from uh, different area. And uh, uh, the, the, the third one is not here, but like uh, mentioned by uh, our team is uh, like, uh, like uh, water, uh, like <laughs> it's a common term is uh, room for water. Uh, like uh, in uh, you know may, may you know but in the uh, development city uh, urban planning is uh, quite common especially especially in the development city and so uh, when we design uh, the city we we have to prepare uh, somewhere else that get flooded uh, during some cases and that's what we call uh, room for water uh, and uh, some strategy here uh, uh, that we um, we get here, it's just uh, like uh, uh, some, uh, in the case of like uh, community point, uh, points uh, that for example, like uh, for the uh, uh, water supply purposes, uh, 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 we try to, uh, we, we can like increase uh, the water uh, efficiency. Um, like, uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, water demand and water availability uh, if like water demand increase and water availability uh, like it cannot adapt uh, like reach the, that demand, so now we we can like reduce uh, the water demand by increase the uh, water efficiency. Uh, and uh, the the second one is uh, like uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, some in uh, we should uh, get input from the community because uh, 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 the the community is very important uh, to like uh, manage uh, and uh, operating or everything in in uh, in management uh, of the the pond here. So we should get uh, some information from the community. And um, the third one uh, we uh, we highlighted is uh, the uh, power balance uh, because uh, from uh, power balance between the um, men, women, and uh, from uh, major ma majority and minority, yeah. and uh, this is some highlight from uh, my group. Like, thank you very much, uh, Tan. Yeah, the next two tables that will share their highlights is table number two. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for the group two, advancing technology for the Lilaishland future uh, for the host. Dr. Let me, can you tell us more about yourself? Uh, <laughs> yes, mm. uh, for the next. <laughs> okay. Uh, the host uh, for the Dr. Leonie Piazan. But for me, uh, my name is Lam Ngân Suliya Wong. I'm from Laos for the MTT Fellow. Uh, for the next uh, technology to be inclusive. Uh, be quite the, uh, for the design and uh, deployment plan. Next, uh, two way construction with the uh, technology and inclusive be quite the, uh, next, the target group company. Uh, next, for two, uh, everyone is the responsibility for the government journal uh private sector yes for the, thank you for the group too <laughs> okay thank you very much Lamnan. and then the last but not least certainly uh table okay. one okay uh my name is Samyang and good afternoon again so you have been listening to all a lot of solutions and practices in the morning and until now so so my group is just I just pick up one highlights uh, approach which is focus on citizen science approach which is uh, so 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 the approach is what the solution is we uh we think about so one is that we we want to invest we should invest more knowledge of people because like you have been we have been discussed about the people awareness uh women awareness on understanding climate change so this is this is the area that we are going to do to, uh, we are go we should do and uh second point is the connects with stakeholder uh private uh, private sector, company, NGO, uh, think tanks, uh, policymaker, etc. Especially government, and and also uh, the ownership of 
citizen in their village uh, and also and also focus on the flexibility adaptive because like you have been mentioned a lot of policy which is what you think that it could be uh, work well in the Mekong region, but you have to be aware that each villager, they have their own adaptive uh, in terms of climate change. So we should uh, we should think about the uh, flexible adaptivity, which let people doing, let people uh, working for their own, for example, like ask local people to, to think about what are the methods that have been done to adapt to climate change in, in their own local method. And also we focus on the roles of government, the roles, especially the authority, local authority, which they are the function, they are the institution in the play, which they should, because they have the budget, because the government have a budget allocation from the, uh, the government to the local, so they can use it to gathering people to, uh, to work on that. And also uh, the last part, the roles of community itself, which I have been mentioned earlier. If you have to, if you want to know more clarification, uh, I can ask the club to uh, detail on that. Thank you very much. Very good. Samyang, thank you very much. Now we're going to show to you how we have visually summarized all of this different uh, discussion that we just had. Uh, I would like to introduce Disery from Tofu Collectives or Tofu Creatives to, to show the summary. Okay, thank you, Albert. So while you've been discussing, we've been listening and illustrating. So just to walk you through it, a quick visual journey of today's session. So for the first group, the emphasis on local understanding of issues and citizen science and investing in people. And for advancing technologies, equitable, inclusive access, and everyone is responsible. And for water storage management options, consensus building, flood water storage, underground water banks, for the JETC solution, having a regional vision beyond SDGs, having cross-sector coordination and addressing power imbalances. And for the key BPIOs, having a transdisciplinary approach, having money on the table, having respect, do no harm, and looking at benefits for all. For the just renewable energy transition, uh, having a multi-channel communication, the importance of vertical governments, and stakeholder inclusion. And for other solutions, the highlight was on behavior change visibility and the focus on local and traditional nature-based solutions. So that's a big picture of today's Solutions Cafe. Thank you, everyone. Back Thanks a lot, Disari. Now, any comments or reactions to all the discussions that we had? So the focus was on inclusion and equity with regards to each of the solutions. And then you have identified some principles, some actions that we should do together to ensure that when we implement these solutions, they will be inclusive and equitable. Any quick reactions or comments that you would like to share at this point? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Only one small thing jumped out as we heard across all the groups is I think that food for thought as we move towards cocktails is that there are some of these ideas that seem to be about the questions that we will ask uh, in our organizations as KBPIOs. There were some really good ideas about how we would answer those questions, what kinds of research we would do and with whom. There were, there were ideas about how we would operate together, um, issues of trust and respect. Uh, and then what didn't come out, but I think is implicit or will maybe come come out on reflection is, is what do we as individuals own in this? And so, so what agency do we have? What power do we have in our own role as professionals to take all these forward? So that was just my, my quick thought. Very good addition, um, Cynthia. A big round of applause to Cynthia. So let's think about our role, our agents in all of the solutions, because certainly we're not actually telling other people to implement this for us, but actually this is the thing that we need to do together. Now, can I invite our online participants if there are other reflections or comments that you would like to share? Is there anyone from our online participants? Um, okay. Uh, I think that's quite clear. Uh, 
All right. Okay. Now you might be asking what's next, right? What's after this, what's going to happen? So can I invite Kunchiani to tell us about, about the next steps? Thank you very much, everyone. Can I uh, request everyone to give a big hand to all the organizers and also the first person for this session? It's really fantastic to uh, to see how we can really engage with colleagues working from different sectors, different backgrounds and interests uh, in very short moment, I think about an hour. And we could really come up with so much and also good idea on how we could be more inclusive. And you may wonder why we designed these sessions in such a way, because uh, it's really replicate and representing uh, the beauty of having uh, people from different uh, backgrounds and coming together, working on different kind of projects. But what is really common issues and also common concern we have here as a whole network or alliance is really how we can make sure in any knowledge uh, productions, solutions, uh, recommendations really come to participation and inclusiveness. And each topics that Dr. Tanapon presented earlier, focusing on AI or water storage or uh, this or that, is really representing the need for different sectors and different specific, with some of them quite technical. But all projects, all topics, we need to ensure that we have people in our heart. And we have really make sure that we consider how to engage them really meaningfully, not only to just uh, how many uh, that we have the tick box, but really truly participation, truly engagement, truly uh, owned whatever the solution that we produce in the future. And I want to say again, big thanks to everyone for contributing to these sessions and also uh, this morning sessions. Um, personally, I have learned a lot and I really uh, appreciate uh, colleagues who contributed uh, either here in kind of panelists talking, expressing your view, or you talk uh, on the sides of the things that really at the end of the day will reflect in how we communicate and talk with our colleagues sitting beside us. And even in the future, sending email, it will come uh, whoever participate on this online and on site I really feel that we really owe you so much gratitude for your time and you also your ideas and also even some of the ideas we don't have really uh, the response to the questions, but this is really our homework that we will take forward. Uh, if you ask me what I have learned and what I will take this forward and in consultation with our colleague working on this program, Mekong uh, Tal Leadership and Think Tank Network and Summonet and many others that we are part of. It's really uh, the inspirations that whatever we do in the future, we should make sure that we do a little bit, continue what we are good, and at the same time, challenge ourselves to be doing more. And Ellen mentioned very well how we can find a little bit more space to extend, expand opportunity for research investigations either citizen science that also mentioned by Shameng here, or the opportunity for us to engage with uh, civil societies and also in the minority and other that some of participants highlighting. This will be also the principle and the idea when we design the membership of the Alliance and also when it comes to our judgment uh, with the future applications that we will receive by end of this month, uh, when it comes to flagship studies for uh, research and policies, and also rapid response grant application for practical solutions. This will be taken into a house, and I would like to echo to many colleagues uh, sitting in the program selling committee yesterday that when we access the application, we are not looking only the best applications, not top notch the research publication or anything like that. We also look at opportunity to enhance the capacities in the region that owned by the region and for people in the region. That is also one of the main issues that I really like to emphasize that with that, the, the application deadline is still open by end of this month. 
And I see that a lot of really good insights here represented by seven fellows uh, from Summonet and also for MTT. Really give a clue how we can be more effective in inclusiveness on each topic. And if you have interest to apply and be implementer to fill in the knowledge gap and also addressing the policy demand and practice demand, please feel free to take forward on the recommendation here enhancing your applications to meet really the expectations for yourselves, for the partners, and also for policy actors and local communities that you will engage with them in the next one year or one and a half year. And for component three in particular, we really learn a lot on how to uh, engage with the colleagues here. We will do more next year, the, uh, the meeting with Alliance, and I think we will actually have a party uh, more participation and uh, let's see how we will decide this but your recommendation suggestion and also uh, um, kind of uh, appreciation is really valuable for us for a better design uh, and also uh, how to say more inclusive more in the future and i would like to invite you to continue kind of observing and also be with us and hopefully in the future become part of our initiative and also our effort. And lastly, when it comes to fellowship, I would really much like to say big thanks to all kind of fellows and also all Alisa's person and to encourage fellows uh, of us here to really represent what a view from uh, all the group members. And we would take on this and also look for, for opportunities for the new batch of the fellows, whether we could really place uh, in other organizations. And I heard uh, some of the partner uh, other speakers there, they seem to be keen also have interest to see uh, to host or maybe uh, opportunity to collaborate with the fellow or the research fellow and other organization that might also benefit equally, not only learning opportunity for fellow, but also contributing to the host organizations in long term. So I will stop here and thank you so much. Uh, for uh, everyone and also um, Albert for hard working and deciding this. Thank you very much. Um, I promise no, we're, we're okay. Um, we're four minutes over time, but we will wrap up in the next five minutes. But just right now, um, Shane, you want to say something? Yes, just very quickly, if I can. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for coming, but also just to thank SEI for a fantastically organized event today. Uh, perhaps if we can give them a, a round of applause. Not only in the policy front, but also all the back, uh, back of office work that's mm. gone into today. It's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much. I just wanted to actually address your last question and thank you, Chai Hannes, for, for all that wonderful information that you've just given us. But in terms of the next step, the very next step, um, come tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. uh, tomorrow we'll have some great discussions around uh, climate and all the other issues we've talked about today. So the first step in, in taking forward today is, is contributing to the debates tomorrow. So I hope to see everyone here tomorrow uh, and, and joining in. Thank you. Very good. Thanks a lot, Shane. We're not done yet, okay? So another immediate next step that's going to happen is, Karen, please tell everyone. So we've just spent the last hour or so talking about inclusion. And during the cocktail hour, members of the JEDC team, of which I'm a part, and some of the colleagues here will come with a piece of paper and a marker and ask you, what does inclusion mean for you? What we'd like you to do is write on a piece of paper what inclusion means for you within this context or within your life. We're going to take a picture of that and we're going to upload it into a system and make a slideshow. Inclusion is critical to this program. It's critical to everything that we do and, and the future of the region and the Mekong. So please have a little think right now. And when we come up with a piece of paper and a marker, don't be surprised. We look forward to hearing from you about this. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Karen. So I hope you will join. So another immediate next step happening soon. There will be cocktails later, but before that, there will be uh, an awarding of certificates for our fellows. So the fellows, the, the scribes who reported earlier, you will receive their certificates, which will start and, uh, at 515. And then there will also be an awarding of the of photo story, uh, Summernet Young Professional Photo Story Contest. 
So you will see more about those beautiful photos later. At, that will also happen at 5.45. Okay, and last but not least, can you all stand up? And then can you raise your right hand for Summernet? And then left hand for the MTT? MTT. And then fold? And then give yourself a pat on the back for wonderful participation to our event. Thank you very much.